Every month, a bunch of weird stuff happens. No denying it. The world of gaming is weird. And every month, Game Ranks puts together a nice little compilation of the weird. I'm folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the weird gaming stories of June 2023. And number 10, a real trucking company is buying billboards in American Truck Simulator for finding new truck driving people. And it's definitely a weird thing to think about. That said, it's perhaps one of the most intelligent ideas ever. The people playing American Truck Simulator are people who are doing exactly what they would be doing, but because they enjoy it. They're not getting paid to play American Truck Simulator, and they would get paid to do the same thing for real, and we're not talking contract work. The company doing it is Schneider, and if you look into their employment, we're talking about jobs that border on six figures, which obviously is nowhere near what it was 20 years ago, but they're talking about paid flights, a guarantee of earning a grand weekly your first 120 days, paid orientation, some of the jobs have like three grand sign-on bonuses, tuition reimbursement, but arguably one could say that this job is about as good as anything you're going to get going to school. I would guess that they're going to get a lot of applicants. It's a brilliant idea. Obviously, it's an ad inside a game that you paid for, which is going to irritate some people. But honestly, it's probably one of the most relevant ads I've ever seen in something. It's not the first time somebody spent money putting ads in video games that people have paid for, and it's garnered some ire in the past. Partly because, like, let's just be honest, Pepsi ads in a game are kind of weird. It's not super relevant. And then also there was one time where Barack Obama put ads into a whole bunch of games during his first presidential run. And it was, I mean, just about as well-liked as you can imagine. But these are all things that have really nothing to do with the game being played. And I'm not one to pra praise advertising. I really am not. I, I'm not a fan of advertising. I always consider it very manipulative. But in this case, I mean, people who like this game could do what they do in this game for a, a bunch of money if they wanted. That's potentially life changing for somebody, which is weird all in itself. At number nine, people are building computers in Tears of the Kingdom because, you know, duh, why wouldn't they? They did it in Minecraft, why wouldn't they do it in this? And I'm not gonna lie, I don't understand anything I'm about to say, not a word of it. But the first and probably most high profile example of this is a calculator. I do not understand what we're looking at. I don't know how to determine what the answer is. I have no idea what is happening here, but it's a one bit calculator. That means ones or zeros, binary code, and it uses lights to take inputs and do the calculations. Now, what's particularly impressive about this is that Tears of the Kingdom has a 21 object build limit. So they've built a calculator with very few objects here. That's impressive. Now, that limit also does tell us that these are not going to become complex computers that you run Doom on or Microsoft Word or whatever. Somebody got Windows 95 running in Minecraft, I remember. Uh, you're not gonna get to that point here just because of the sheer limit. I imagine with emulation, that limit will eventually have a mod to it, but then it becomes a question of what can the game handle? So we'll see where that goes. At number eight, Diablo makes me ask the question, when does a transaction stop being micro? I think it's it's right here. There is a, a, a set of armor in the game, the bone guy armor, that uh, you get it as DLC, uh, that allegedly a microtransaction for $21. So I have two questions. Firstly, is this still a microtransaction? And if the answer is yes, this is a microtransaction and not simply a transaction or a, perhaps a macro transaction if you want to get salty. But if yes, this is a microtransaction, is our money really that worthless? Like, no joke, this suit of armor costs a dollar more than Witcher 3's Blood and Wine expansion when it came out. Blood and Wine is essentially a triple A game campaign. It's definitely not as long as the main Witcher campaign, but it's a triple A game campaign. I could easily see another company selling that as a standalone for 60 bucks when it came out. And this suit of armor costs a dollar more, $21 suit of armor. I don't know, maybe it's not that weird. Maybe other people see this and think it's normal, but uh, for those of us who experienced the before times, this looks psychotic. 
At number seven, Jeff Keeley, the Summer Game Fest guy. Um, you know how much of a success the Summer Game Fest has become when that's literally how I think of Jeff Keeley at this point. I mean, I remember when he was just like a guy writing articles and eventually co-hosting something on G4. I don't even really remember what. But now he's the Game Awards and the Summer Games Fest guy. And along with Conan O'Brien, is a weird hologram in Death Stranding. I wanted to set that all up because part of the reason why Summer Games Fest exists is because he left E3. E3 had been attempting to rebrand as a fan media and influencer festival that year, and he left saying that he wasn't comfortable with the direction they were taking. And now that it's dead, Jeff said he doesn't think Summer Game Fest killed it by being competition for it. He thinks that E3 killed itself. He said four years ago he realized E3 wasn't evolving in a way it really needed to in order to be relevant and these words sound a little weird just because we're talking about e3 being gone and it, it, it's a loss for everybody who enjoys video games but i don't think jeff is wrong i don't think they really successfully transitioned to anything i mean it's been pretty spotty over the last few years anyway and summer game fest is just kind of a fundamentally different thing i don't know it's weird that people kind of blame him for it because a lot of the time he's done a show there hasn't even been an e3 to compete with so eh at number six, the Indiana Jones game Bethesda was making that had said that they were going to do it for all of the consoles is now an Xbox exclusive, which doy. I know they tried to deflect a whole bunch saying, oh, well, we're going to have a lot of multi-platform games and it's going to be important ones, and blah, blah, blah. And Disney had a signed agreement saying if they merged with Microsoft, they would still make the game for multiple consoles and well. I'm just going to go ahead and say, I think it's weird that people thought that was going to be the direction that they stayed moving in. Of course, they're going to make the games for as few things as possible. That's the easiest way to make a better game. You don't have to make multiple versions of it. Well, they do. I mean, PC and Xbox. But he was quick to say this and even said he didn't think that Starfield would be coming out this year if they didn't make it an Xbox exclusive. And that's probably true. In some ways, it's weird to think of Bethesda as a first party developer making stuff on only Xbox. But it's almost weirder that people thought after being bought by a company that makes video game consoles that they weren't going to have, like move to that paradigm. Hard for me to wrap my mind around really. Moving on to number five, the Mist creator has defended the use of AI assisted content generation because you know, AI is now the big problem that everybody cares about and really doesn't mean anything because uh, generative AI was apparently involved in various things like journals, some paintings. It was involved in modifying audio in certain ways. But according to Cyan Worlds, the developer, this was all assisted. AI didn't fully create any of this stuff. All the voice acting was actually performed by a human being, but they did use AI to alter the tone and pitch, presumably allowing one person to do multiple voices. Uh, the actor that did that actually declined to be credited, and I do not blame them because being involved in anything AI-oriented seems to really be a problem for certain people. It creates a whole bunch of controversy, and the fact that I'm even saying that it shouldn't generate the amount of controversy it does is gonna get people mad at me. In terms of writing, one of the standard ways that AI is being implemented is sort of generating structural versions of paragraphs, expressing ideas to the AI and saying, how how do we make this into a structure and then taking that sort of bland AI writing and using it as the basis to write something that's good. We actually do a similar process here, although not with AI. Obviously, there's humans here that write scripts, and a lot of the time those scripts are made primarily to express the ideas that are talked about in the writing process in a manner where it's structured to make sense. And then as somebody sits down to record it, it changes a lot. I'm guessing that if you throw Throw in AI, it's not terribly different from what I just described, except for, uh, again, we don't use AI to do it. I want to make that 
real clear. But I, I, I'm pretty constantly crediting the efforts of the rest of the Game Ranks team for videos that we do. I often get nice compliments from people in the comments, and I, I like to thank them and also say these are a team effort. There's a lot of effort that goes into making any of these videos, whether we script it or not. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And our team is small enough that you don't really have to worry about whether or not we have the capacity to write a script for something. And I imagine an indie game where somebody's got to come up with a whole lot of content that's really difficult to structure. I get why they'd use AI. I'm not saying that's how they used it. It's probably an educated guess though, just based on the process of writing collaboratively, period. Keeping in mind Cyan Worlds is the original developer of the Myst series and there is a whole lot in terms of expectation and standards that people have for Myst. And at this point they have less than 50 employees and that isn't all game devs or artists or anything like that. The administrative staff is counted in that from the CEOs all the way down to secretaries and assistants. It's less than 50 people working on this game. I can understand why they would go that route. For me, what really matters is if they're able to put out a quality product. That being said, they did, I mean, deliver on a few things and on a few people had some pretty negative criticism. And that was before the whole AI thing happened. So mm, I talked for a long time about this one because there's a lot of different angles and that's kind of what makes it weird. I mean, the comments are a great place to talk about AI. I'll definitely be paying attention. At number four, this bamboo grove. Now uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking this is real. It's not though. If you stay with it long enough, the Unreal logo pops up. And th I mean, that's just completely astounding. I don't know if I have anything to say that's gonna make you go, whoa. Just the fact that you're looking at something that isn't real, something that's 3D modeled. I have not seen that looks this good. And this is Unreal Engine. I know we've done a lot of videos on Unreal Engine tech demos and stuff like that, but it doesn't get any less weird to think about the fact that it just keeps getting more and more photorealistic. Y you think like, eh, this is about as good as it's gonna get for a while. And then nope, look at this. This looks like some footage that some person took like a mirrorless camera out into nature and filmed. It helps that the person who made this clearly understands what camera movement looks like when somebody does that. They didn't do anything that came off in in any way fake so in that respect i think the person who made this and their comprehension of what camera movement really looks like is a big help but man rain used to be impossible that just looks like rain at number three uh microsoft basically said oh everybody's kicking our ass <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's not something that any of us didn't know. Uh, but the Xbox series has for sure lost the console wars for this generation. Um, Sony killing it. Nintendo Switch uh, killing everything. It's 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 outdated hardware to say the very least and just annihilating everything else. We found out in May that Nintendo Switch surpassed 125 million units sold. And obviously it's sold more since then. Around the same time in May, we found out the PS5 has sold 38 million units, still pretty respectable, although not even approaching Nintendo Switch. And the Xbox Series X and S combined have sold about 21 million units. Keeping in mind that the, the specs on both of those are pretty different, and so is the price. Uh, the PlayStation 5 actually costs a little bit more on average than the Xbox Series X, although you can generally get it at $499, which is the same thing the Xbox Series X costs. And the Xbox Series S, the sort of low-grade version that still is definitely next-gen compared to the Xbox One, uh, that sells for 200 bucks less. So when you total these two console sales is kind of pathetic compared to Switch. And it certainly is, isn't is going to approach Sony sales unless they drastically speed up. Now, the thing is, is Microsoft said something that implied they kind of sacrificed this generation to invest in cloud technology. And I don't know if you've played games using their cloud service. It's actually pretty good. I've played quite a few games on it at this point. It's how I play video games in my bedroom. And unless I'm playing something that's really fast paced, it doesn't feel a lot different than playing video games in my living room, which has the hardware in it. So it's not as though they're doing a bad job with that, but that seems like a flimsy excuse 
Microsoft is a much bigger company than Sony. Sony has a market cap of $150 billion, which is definitely nothing to laugh at, but Microsoft's market cap is over $2 trillion. A trillion is a million million. I can't imagine having that kind of money. And that's one trillion. Microsoft's market cap is two. The idea that they sacrificed putting all of their resources into promoting a console just seems incorrect to me. I think they pretty much did what they should do to promote a console. It's just people want the PlayStation 5 more. It's got better games on it, exclusively speaking anyways. And certainly Microsoft has been attempting to mitigate that by just buying every game company, but even that's landing them in some trouble. I don't know. I don't think that they really have an excuse to be losing. And for them to come out and be like, well, yeah, it's because we're working on cloud gaming. Shut up. That's not true. If that doesn't read as a little weird in terms of an excuse, I don't know if you're paying attention. At number two, there's a competitive PvP six versus six FPS called X Defiant that uh, basically is Ubisoft attempting to compete with Call of Duty's version of that mode. It's in beta, uh, closed beta, might I add, and people are selling cheats for it. <laughs> Uh, a YouTube user called Sergeant Scully uh, posted a video showing uh, an advertisement for a cheat for X Defiant, a game in private beta. Like, th there's two things you can take from this. Uh, first off, it is absolutely insane what level the cheat industry has gotten to at this point. But actually, it bodes pretty well for the game. If people are interested in cheats for it, that means it's a game people want to play. Hopefully, Ubisoft can mitigate that cheating before it becomes a problem. Um, I mean, it's in, again, closed beta, meaning they really don't have the amount of people playing it that are eventually going to be. So they're going to be able to isolate cheats better, hopefully, and maybe deal with it before it moves past the closed beta stage. But if people are interested in it to the point where there is a market for cheats in a closed beta, I don't know. It sounds intriguing. I'll at least play it. I know Ubisoft probably doesn't think, oh, we want people to know that there's cheaters in the private beta. Hopefully it doesn't last till when it actually comes out, but I don't know. It makes me more interested in the game. And finally, at number one, um, another one of these stories where a, a minor child spends uh, their family's money all on mobile games. Uh, these actually aren't that weird in terms of occurrence anymore, but the amount of money spent here, I think, is uh, a, a little more weird. So a 13-year-old teen girl spent $64,000, uh, her family's entire savings on mobile games, um, 30,000 of that on microtransactions, and did it over five months. She didn't just do it for herself either. She also did uh, microtransactions for her classmates so they could play along with her. Now, this is basically a problem we've been seeing worldwide. We've seen stories of kids in the United States spending thousands of dollars, kids in the United Kingdom. I'm pretty sure we saw a few of them from different EU countries and a few from China. And, and I'm going to say this one's from China. They're not uncommon in China. They're uncommon at this amount with literally any country, at least for a family that isn't filthy rich. I'll say I'm sure there's some rich turd out there spending way more money than that on microtransactions. But like to you and me, $64,000 is a very large amount of money. When you see this, you can kind of understand why China is trying to limit mobile game time through law because it's kind of like, holy hell, I've never had $64,000 on hand for one. That's crazy. That is a crazy amount of money and 30,000 of it in microtransactions. Oh, it's frustrating to think about actually. And a quick bonus for you. Like, I I'm not sure that this is gonna blow your mind, but wowie, I think they've finally overcome the uncanny valley. This doesn't look photorealistic, uh, but it looks like a human being and it doesn't do the uncanny valley thing to me. I feel kind of like I'm just watching a film. 
It's a little showcase from uh, an Epic Games team, and it's called Blue Dot. And, and honestly, like, it's really a showcase of their facial animation. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.